Hello everyone from the United Nations headquarters in New York where the first senior level meeting of the Global Partnership for Effective Development Cooperation or GPEDC as it is more commonly known as is being held on the theme of addressing how we work together for more sustainable development outcomes. This SLM will contribute for the implementation of the 2030 agenda over the next decade. Right now, we are in conversation with Justin Kilkolin, who is the co-chair of Civil Society Partnership for Development Effectiveness, or CPDE. Justin, why is the issue of effective development cooperation so important? Well, you could nearly invert the question and say, if development, if, uh, if development is ineffective, what good is it? And uh, it's even interesting that we even have to ask the question. I think the reason why it has become an issue is that development efforts were not being effective. And both the donors and the partner countries really asked serious questions. If we're going to continue with this effort of ODA and assisting uh, poorer countries to build up their communities and so on, we really got to learn how to do it properly. So we had about three decades of development aid in the 60s, 70s and 80s and it was felt that not sufficient progress was being made. So one of the initiatives that arose from that was the MDGs. Let's focus this thing and put it into some kind of a structure and we can then measure it and so sort of criticize ourselves against the targets we have set. That helped to kind of get a, a, an agenda going where we were now being accountable. Um, but in the, uh, the Paris meetings in 2005, the donors said, we really need to get our act together. Uh, the beneficiary countries, now the partner countries, w were complaining that there were so many visits from different development organizations that one country said 3,000 visits in one year, I think it was Tanzania. People uh, were spending more time meeting the needs of the donors and the follow-up than actually helping their own people. So we've seen something of a revolution in how uh, development aid is carried out over the past 15 years, uh, helped by uh, the various declarations on development effectiveness, by the MDGs and now the SDGs, helped by monitoring that is now going on where we really go down and we ask questions, did it happen, has it happened, and so on. It's all very technical. It can be very kind of mind-numbing in these co some of these conferences about the detail of it, but it's actually very important. This is the most political of all the aspects of development aid because it's one thing for countries to come to the UN and make kind of promises and commitments. It's another thing about what they do. And the question of development effectiveness focuses on, well, what have they actually done? And one of the big issues that is emerging here is, of course, that the commitments that were entered into over various international conferences have not been delivered on. And uh, that is why development effectiveness is an important issue because it highlights this failure. Whereas before we had decades where nobody asked the question and nobody had to give an answer. Right. So what steps should the civil society organizations take to effectively contribute towards uh, the achievement of SDGs and uh, to uh, achieve Agenda 2030? Well, I think we have two roles. Mm -hmm. um, the one that we like to do best is to hold the, uh, our governments to account. The one we least like to do is to hold ourselves to account. <laughs> so I'll go to the governments first. I mean, clearly the uh, uh, civil society does have a role as a watchdog, uh, whether it's the citizens of the countries themselves. I mean, they elect a government. Uh, they are entitled to ask that government, are they delivering on their responsibilities to help the poorest people, to leave nobody behind, to you know, one of the slogans of the SDGs. Uh, are they allowing uh, civil society organizations, be it women's groups, farmers groups, trade unionists, journalists as want well, to organize themselves and to make a contribution? And there's that, all of that aspect of things. How are they spending the money that they, they get in development assistance towards the country? Is it going to where it's needed most? Or is some of it just being used to keep uh, an elite happy and in their own kind of context benefiting perhaps more than those who need it most? All of that is very important. And what we need is for governments to recognize that this is the sign of a healthy democracy, a healthy society, if this dialogue goes on between the citizens 
and their government. It's not just a, an election every five years. Democracy is an ongoing process that involves dialogue and consultation. So that is one thing. But also, uh, if, we're, if we as civil society are going to be critical of donor governments, of partner governments, of the UN and so on, what about ourselves? Do we treat each other with respect? Do we listen to each other? Do we consult? Uh, at every level, whether it's the northern NGOs that have large financial resources going to the southern countries and behaving almost like governmental donors and having to have all their forms filled in and um, we owe, to whom are we accountable. Everyone wants to account up the line to the, to the donor, to the government, to the UN. Who's accountable down the line to the smaller organisation, the grassroots, to the citizens? And I don't know that we do a great job at that in civil society organisations. Uh, because it's just obviously human nature in a sense, like uh, those of us who are involved in this work, we're usually from the better off parts of society. Some of us have come from very poor backgrounds, but we get the university education, we find ourselves employed in an organisation and so on. It is easy to become removed from the grassroots. And I do think that uh, that's a very important part. And we made our own commitments in Istanbul about what we would do to improve ourselves. It included that we would collaborate together, we would remove competitiveness from each other, that we would share learning, we would support each other in our endeavours, that we would work towards a sustainable development, that we'd be very careful that we ourselves contribute to that and that we're not doing things in our working uh, habits that are against sustainability. We fly all over the world, yeah. our carbon footprint is enormous. How do we uh, you know, square that circle? So, I mean, there's a lot that we can do uh, in terms of our uh, self-analysis as well as being critical of others. And as we might say to, uh, to governments that our, our uh, criticism of you is constructive and helps to build a better society, we too should be prepared to be criticised to say, you could try harder. Right. And charity begins at home. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to mend ourselves yes. before yeah. pointing fingers yeah. at others and what we sometimes say that if you live in a glass house, you should not be throwing stones at others. Right, right. Uh, how is CPD harnessing the role of civil society in uh, promoting sustainable development? Is it well, uh, CPD is, is a particular type of civil society platform. There are many different yes. ones. Yes. We grew out of this development effectiveness uh, agenda that uh, culminated in Busan as it eight, eight years ago with the you know the, the new uh, Busan agreement about what constituted the, the principles of effective development and uh, so what we do is uh, we follow this agenda carefully and we feed this um, what comes out of this work into other civil society networks we this is what we bring to if you like the broad civil society uh, sector uh, we are in an exceptional position in this uh, global partnership because uh, the global uh, structures are confined to governments. Anything that's under the UN auspices is only government. They might talk to us, they might consult us, but when they close the doors they make the decisions. In the global partnership, which is what CPD relates to, we are inside the door as a, an autonomous development actor recognised as that and being able to make our own contribution at the same level as any other player. And that is a unique thing for civil society and I think we have a responsibility as CPD to fulfil that role very carefully and in a way that reflects the broad civil society uh, objectives and their desires and so on for making a contribution. So we uh, are, you know, take part in, in, in the, the broader debates as well and we're here in New York and we are now, I'm heading off next to meet with the Action for Sustainable Development people and we will have an exchange on what has been going on here this week and so we feed into that broad debate. But we do have that particular role because we are actually seen as a legitimate development actor and able to contribute to the agenda that emerges from this meeting here in New York. Uh, what sort of support do civil society organizations need uh, from other actors to help them full, um, progress towards uh, help in sustainable development? Well, I think capacity building is always an issue. Mm -hmm. And we've just come from a session here where the representative of the Irish government talked about 
the need to build the capacity of the smaller organisations that even not only should we as the, maybe the, the better off civil society groups be doing it but that donors need to be building capacity at the ground and that can be everything from the ability to analyse to uh, look at problems and be able to articulate them to the handling of funds uh, and even to deal in capacity to help with people to avoid um, you know, abuse and harassment in their work and you know, many, many other issues. Uh, small groups uh, can feel vulnerable if they feel exposed and uh, they need to be given the formation to know that they have their rights, they can stand for their rights and to be able to be networked into broader networks where they can also receive support and solidarity and mutual uh, working together of different groups. Together we're strong. You were talking of um, not blaming the government all the time, looking at us, mm. ourselves also. Uh, forget about donor governments, but elsewhere also, do you think that the dialogue is sort of breaking down or there is not so much of a dialogue now between civil society and many governments? Well, I've just come out of a session here where all the governments are saying, of course we're talking to our civil society. <laughs> so, so I suppose the issue here is, uh, I suppose, uh, you know, what governments say, what governments do. Particularly but, in the South. Yes, but, but what we are seeing is, uh, through the monitoring of uh, these various commitments, mm -hmm. that in many countries the role of civil society has gone backwards rather than forwards. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is a serious issue and it has been recognised, uh, I think, by everybody uh, in this last session which was looking at the role of civil society and that there is a need to make a particular effort now. After four years of the SDGs, uh, the, 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 some of them are going along reasonably well, but some of them are failing. And the one on participation on partnership and civil society is one of those that is failing. So we would like to see a renewed effort between now and the next big meeting of this global partnership in two years time. We've asked that a program of work be instituted that will examine why the commitments given have not been implemented. I think one thing that I find interesting is that one of the slogans of the SDGs is leave nobody behind. But I think we could also say we should leave no previous commitment behind because that is what is happening. Uh, commitments have been made and forgotten and uh, we need to remind people that commitments have to be uh, met if the SDGs are to be met. Thank you, Justin. It is always so energizing <laughs> speaking with you. We were in conversation with Justin Kilkulin, co-chair of the CPDE. And right now, in at the UN headquarters in New York, attending the first senior level meeting of GPEDC. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.